Shabbat Shalom. This Shabbat we read Parashat Re'eh. Our parasha really puts an emphasis on caring for others, such as widows, orphans, foreigners, and in short, caring for the poor. Look at the commanded holidays, which appear towards the end of the parasha. It is impossible to celebrate these properly without caring for the poor, without opening the hand and the heart to the foreigners, to the weak, and to the poor who live among us. Notice how the main emphasis of the Bible is not me, myself, and I. The Bible is not about me. I am not the center of the scriptures. Yeshua teaches me that God is in the center of the scriptures. And secondly, my neighbor is in the center of the scriptures. The entire Old and New Testament, according to Yeshua, come down to the relationship with God and to how we relate to others. It might come as a surprise that our faith is not the center of the scriptures, but rather our actions, our fruit, not what we believe, but what we do with our own two hands. We have become accustomed to emphasizing our faith, brushing up on our doctrine, and sharpening our Bible lessons. The true emphasis of the scripture is the physical manifestation of faith. One of the passages in the New Testament that have always attracted me and had a, made a great impact on me is the final judgment in Matthew 25. Yeshua sets the righteous on the right and the non-righteous on the, the, the wicked on the left. And what does the king say? Yeshua says to the righteous, you gave me water because I was thirsty. You fed me because I was hungry. You helped me because I was miserable. What is the answer of the righteous? Yeshua, our Lord, our King, when? When were you hungry or thirsty or in need? When? I helped a lot of people, but I remember them all. I made contact with each and every one. I gave personal attention to everyone. Sir, I do not remember you. Apologies, but maybe someone else helped you. The King, Yeshua, will answer and say everything you did for these people and those families who needed help is a hundred percent as if you did it personally for me. Come into the kingdom of heaven. Yeshua does not mention here faith at all, but rather what people did or did not do. They helped or they did not help, period. In this week's parasha, more than 50 commandments are mentioned. But the commandments that deal with charity especially stand out today. If anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites in any of the towns of the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. The commandment, be open-handed, appears twice. The parasha continues with additional commandments which care for the poor. Today we learn about tithing for the poor. In every third year, the entire year's tithe goes to, towards the poor and to, towards those in need. The parasha also deals with the cancellation of debts, giving loans even when the seventh year is approaching, and the giving of payment or some type of tithe to the slave who ends the period of slavery. Even the commandment, be joyful at your festival. And the three festivals include the foreigners, the fatherless, and the widows. In the context of charity, I would like to start with a story. A few years ago, a successful businessman who was known as a rich but gracious man died. He occasionally donated to, to worthy causes and charities. When that rich man was about to die, he entrusted his children with two closed envelopes and ordered them to open the first one immediately after his death, and the second after the end of the Shiva, the Jewish time of mourning. When the day arrived and he passed away, the boys opened the first envelope with the father's request, I want to be buried with my socks on. The boys wanted to fulfill their father's last request, but the Chevra Kadisha, the Jewish burial service, insisted that according to Jewish law, no man was, was to be buried with socks 
all their pleas, cries, and threats, even large bribes, did not help. And so the father was buried without socks. They all looked forward for the end of the Shiva to discover the secret of the second envelope. All the family and friends gathered, and the eldest son took the envelope with trembling hands and opened it. Inside it was written, I know you buried me without socks. I just wanted to show you that no matter how much money and property you have in the world, when you leave it, you will not be able to take with you even one simple pair of socks. Yeshua taught us not to gather our treasure here in this world where its value can get lost, stolen, rot, or simply disappear. Instead, Yeshua encouraged us to store up our treasure in heaven where our savings are guarded, where there is an especially large interest, tenfold. This week's parasha teaches us that the choice is ours. We can choose blessing. We can choose to fulfill the Word of God, to carry out the commandments, to live out our faith. And God's Word promises us blessing, which is translated as peace, tranquility, security, fruitfulness, success, health, and joy in the family. There is one verse in this parasha that jumps out to me personally. I have read it already, but I want to read it again. If anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites in any of the towns of the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend to them whatever they need. The commandment here is clear. We must help the poor the people and families in distress. I encourage you to find a charitable organization that you trust and that is close to your place of residence and participate there and lend a hand. Also, if you want and if you're interested in donating to Jerusalem, at Nativia we help 130 families on a weekly basis. On average, each family has five people, so we help about 650 adults and children. Every week, a representative of each family receives a selection of selected fruits and vegetables, a selection of frozen products such as fish, chicken, and meat, and a selection of products such as oil, rice, and even cornflakes. At Nativia, we have been carrying out this sacred work since the year 2000. 18 years of charity. We work hand-in-hand -hand with the staff of Jerusalem's Social Service Department. Our weekly Torah portion emphasizing the giving to the poor, the concern for the weak in society, the caring for those who are different from us. I will end with a short story. There are two lakes in the land of Israel. In one, its waters are sweet and fish live there. Trees spread their branches over it and send their thirsty roots into its healthy waters. Children play along its shores, as children played in biblical times. The Jordan River brings to this sea sparkling water that comes down from the hills. The people build their houses near its banks, and the birds build their nests here. And all the animals are happy that they have settled in this place. Yet the Jordan River continues to flow south and flows into another sea. Here, there is no trace of fish, no leaves, no birds. Heavy air hangs over the water. Man, beast, and bird do not drink from the waters of this lake. What is the cause of this enormous difference between the two lakes, which are not that far apart? The Jordan is not to blame. It pours its water into both lakes. The environment is not to blame, nor the land. The Sea of Galilee receives its water from the Jordan River. But the Sea of Galilee does not store the water for itself. For every drop that flows in it, it issues a drop from it. The second lake stores the water coming in it with the greed of a Scrooge. It will not give up its water. Every drop that comes in it is held on to. The Sea of Galilee gives, and therefore it's a living sea. 
The second C does not give, and we call it the Dead Sea. There are two kinds of lakes in Israel, and two types of people are in the world. Let us have a Shabbat of peace, a Shabbat filled with life, with living water. Shabbat Shalom.